we know that cell is the structural and functional unit of all the living organisms if we consider living organisms based on their cell number we have unicellular and multicellular organisms unicellular organisms there is only one cell which is doing all kind of functions then what about multicellular organisms there are millions and billions of cells which have to function in an organized manner if they have to function in an organized manner they have to communicate with each other or they have to get interconnected with each other so this interconnection and communication is done by cell junctions so today we are going to learn about cell junctions there are different types of cell junctions let us see one by one what are they so there are three different types we have occluding anchoring and communicating junction let us start with the occluding junction this occluding junction includes tight junction or the other name is zona occludens why it is called zona occludens let us see the structure and know it in a better way imagine there are two cells arranged adjacent to each other there are two proteins associated in their membrane one is known as occluding and the other one is cloudin as it includes occluding the terminology is similar here okay so these two proteins are associated with tight junction now where exactly you will see tight junction imagine the epithelial layer of stomach which releases hcl if this hcl will leak into the spaces it will destroy the lining so to prevent that we have tight junction so if i ask what is the basic function of tight junction they help in prevention of leakage of materials from the epithelial layer right so this is prevent from leakage of materials coming to the second one that is anchoring junction the term anchoring includes attachment there are two different types that is cell cell attachment and we have cell extracellular matrix attachment cell cell attachment includes two different types adherence junction and we have desmosomes and cell matrix will include focal adhesion and we have hemi desmosomes so their arrangement is different let us see one by one their structures starting with cell cell attachment that is adherence junction imagine again there are two cells attached adjacent to each other so cells externally they have to be connected inside the cell right externally we have catherin proteins and internally they are attached to actin proteins in between we have anchoring proteins also right so this is the structure of adherent junction if you see the epithelial lining this adherent junction will be arranged as a belt so we term it as adhesion belt or zonula adherence right coming to the second type of cell cell attachment that is desmosomes desmosomes again it is similar to that of adherent junction here externally we have catherins but internally it is attached to intermediate filaments these intermediate filaments will include keratin and along with that there are plaque present inside the cell that is inside the cytoplasm this plaque also contains certain proteins like desmoplankin and plancoglobin okay so this is the arrangement of desmosomes next we have cell matrix junctions imagine there is a cell which is attached to extracellular matrix here the external proteins are different that is integrins internally these integrins are connected to actin filaments for stabilization so this is the structure of focal adhesion coming to the second one we have hemi desmosomes hemi desmosomes structurally they are similar to desmosomes but there is only one difference that is external protein so internally they are connected to intermediate filaments and they have plaque proteins but externally they have integrins that is the only difference now we have studied cell cell and cell matrix now what is the function of this anchoring that is nothing but attachment so here is the table showing the internal proteins and external proteins of different anchoring junctions if you see here the cell cell attachment or junctions they have external protein same that is catherins but internally they are connected to two different proteins 
one is connecting to actin the other one is connecting to intermediate filament coming to the cell matrix attachment we have focal adhesion and also we have hemidesmosomes here also external proteins are same that is integrin but internally they are attached to two different proteins that is actin and intermediate filament coming to the third type we have communication junction or you can say gap junction structure if you see imagine there are two cells cell 1 and cell 2 which are connected by connexin protein connexin protein is made up of connexins so if we say one connexon is equal to six connexins then that would be right so this connexon will help in transport of molecules from cell 1 to cell 2 and from cell 2 to cell 1 so when we talk about the function of gap junction it will help in transport of molecules and if we say transport of molecules it is directly helping in communicating so if in nerve impulses if we say so transport of ions will help in communication which is similar to that of plasmodesmata which you will see in plants so there is an opening between cell 1 and cell 2 which is helping the transport of molecules through that opening coming to the summary we have learned about occluding junction which include tight junction anchoring junction and communicating junction which includes gap and plasmodesmata Hi guys, welcome back to Explore Biology. I know I took a very long break from my videos, but from now I promise you that I'll post video every week in my YouTube channel. If you think you have learned something from this video, please like, share and subscribe to my channel Explore Biology. Because what could be a better way of learning science other than exploring it? We'll meet in my next video in the next week. Until then, bye bye.